So I'm currently doing a group project for Studio 8 and one of my mates is using Revit for the first time, which is, you know, fine. It's just that's what happens. Whenever he's trying to show me something, I'm trying to sit there not cringing because of the way he's trying to do it. He's probably doing it in the least efficient way possible. And you know, it made me realize that in Revit, there are a lot of features that are really simple features, but they make a huge difference. And if you're a beginner, you probably don't know about them unless you're actually shown what these features are. So in this video, I thought I'd show you five different Revit features that most beginners don't know, but they definitely should know because they'll really speed up your work process inside of Revit and help you do some cool things. So let's get into it. So if you're working in Revit, you probably know the importance of hierarchy in architectural drawings, the ability to change and utilize line weights and hatches and tones to create a depth in a 2D image. Now, another one of my group mates is pretty well versed using Revit. It's his second or third year using it, and he still didn't really know how to change the visibility or graphic settings of a drawing. So all of his drawings that he'd put on sheets were simply just a drop onto the page, and then he'd, you know, change the crop box of it and fit it nicely, but he wouldn't change any of the hierarchy in the drawing, or maybe he'd bring this into Photoshop afterwards. And you know, that's a way to do it, but you're using Revit, you're using an adaptive software that changes everything for you and it's a, you know, it's meant to be a software package. So as you can see in this floor pan here, the furniture is at a lighter line weight than the walls and some of the walls are being cut through are thicker or in a darker line weight than the other ones. You can see that the floor hatches are in a very light color and a light tone. Some of the levels and the grids have been toned down. The site context has been toned down to then make those important information the important information on these drawings to help that be readable so you may be wondering okay kyle how do i change this stuff in my drawings and this is through the visibility and graphics settings you can get to that by double pressing v or you can press vg they are the same command so i'm going to press vv and that's going to bring up this screen over here which is the visibility and graphic overrides for this view so this is view dependent. This is only going to change properties for this view, the floor plan that I've got opened. It's not gonna change it for the kitchen plan or level one or any other plan or section. It's only for this view. So what you can do here is change, let's say if I type W, this is gonna go to walls. And let's say you wanna to go to floors, you press F, that kind of thing. Otherwise you can just scroll through, but there's a lot in here. So I usually just press WA to go to walls. And you can change, say, the cut lines, the pattern for the cut lines. You can change that to be a dark gray if you wanted all the lines in the walls to be a dark gray, which is what I did for the sketch design. But now that we're starting to, I guess, get a bit more detailed and document this, we don't want just a black line for the walls. But that's something that you can do. If I bring that screen back up and I type FU to, <laughs> not, not FU, that's not what I meant. FU to get to furniture is what I was trying to do. You can see that the lines in a, are in a lighter gray so that the furniture then doesn't read as heavy as some of the other elements. Now, essentially what I'll see a lot of people do is go right click the furniture, go to the off override graphics in view and change this by the element. And this is gonna change it for the view, but it's only gonna change that element. So then you can you know, change the tone of it to a half tone if you want it to be even lighter. This halves the tone of it, obviously. Or you can change the surface patterns, which it has none, so that doesn't really matter. You can change the transparency of it, but there's nothing behind it, so it doesn't matter. Um, but that's where you can change some of those settings, but it's probably not the best way to do it. You wanna use the v, uh, VV or the visibility graphic override settings. And at the moment, you can see that they are all grayed out. Now, the reason this is all grayed out for me is because I'm currently using a template, which is the second key feature that beginners need to know and that my other mate wasn't using. And he was in charge of the elevations and sections, which is something that, you know, you're gonna have to change all of these settings for to get the good hierarchy in it. If you've got, you know, four different elevations for east, north, south, and west, you don't wanna have to go to each view and then change these settings. So what you can do is apply all of these settings to one elevation, may it be the north elevation, and then you can add that to a template, which you can then apply that template to all the other views. And to access view templates, what you're gonna do is go to the properties panel, which is this panel to the side here where it says properties, scroll down until you find identity data, view template. And you can just click on this button here, it may say none, if you've got no um, template applied. And then you can apply a template. 
you can just choose, there's usually default ones set. So you'll have like an architectural plan um, template that is already set. And then once you select that and you apply it, you can then see that it makes changes. And at the moment here, this is where you can access your override settings. So now if we edit these VG override settings, you can see that all of these are now able to be edited. You can see that I've changed the floors to be a lighter color. The furniture is a lighter co uh, color for the projection lines. And if you go down, you can see that the planting is half toned. So that's turned down and you can see that there are a couple of other things like the walls as well. This is where you can also then turn off your levels. If you go to the annotation categories, you may want to turn off your levels for an elevation or section or a detail or something, or maybe your grid markers. You can change that. I just type GR to bring that up. You can see mine are half toned. And if you don't want to show the elevation markers, stuff like that, you can turn off elevations by unchecking it and then they won't show. So this is where you'd change all of your settings and this is the proper way to do it rather than hiding things in view or by changing the uh, element settings in the view. And then under here, this is where you'd also change the scale of the drawing. You change the display model and um, you know you can turn on shadows and you change your lighting in this template. So everything is controlled by the template rather than in the actual view. Because as you can see now, you can't actually change any of this stuff in the view because it's got the template applied to it. But this is the best way to do it because then if you've got, you know, six other stories and you want to apply uh, the same template to them, it's just a one click action. You just click on view template, apply that template, and then all of the settings change. And the good thing is as well is that if anything does change, for example, these walls used to all be in a dark gray color. But once I moved into the developed design, I wanted to show you some more detail. So then rather than going back into each view and changing that setting, I just changed the template settings and it changed across all of them. This also helps make your elevations look a lot more consistent. So they're all got the exact same settings. So they're gonna look exactly the same. You can see these are my elevations on the sheet. And then these are my other elevations. I've just got this grid guide up at the moment, which helped me to line them up. But so definitely have a play around with view templates. Make sure you're using them if you're doing elevations or sections or floor plans because it makes a world of a difference and it's just the proper way to do things. So while we're still looking at this model, the next thing that I think is really important for beginners to know is phasing. I talk a lot about phasing in my Revit course for beginners. If you want to check that out, you can watch it all on YouTube for free or you can go ahead to my website and purchase the course. You get access to all of the project files to go through a complete build of a Revit building, which is really not dumbed down, but it's just all of the basic stuff you need to know to be able to get started with Revit and to get good at Revit and learn it the proper, fastest, easiest, most fun way possible. Anyways, the reason you'd use phases is if you want to phase your project. So for example, for this building here, it's an extension onto an existing building. Pretty much all we're doing is adding on this extension to the back of an existing building. Therefore, all of the other elements that are already there, you don't want to you know, show in detail. You want to just document it that it's there so you can give it off to planning approval and get it ticked off. So then usually to start these projects, you'd model up the existing site and the buildings that are there. But then what happens if you want to you know, make some changes to that building? How do you document that? you'd have to do a demolition plan to dem de uh, demolish walls and then you'd have a proposed plan as well or a proposed set of drawings. And you always need an existing plan usually for a planning approval set. And as you can see here, you can see that I've got a floor plan which is for the existing set. So this is the existing floor plan. And then I've got a demolition plan and these aren't really worked up yet. But then there's also the floor plan which is proposed the additions to it. And you wanna document all three of those stages. But how do you do that in Revit? If I just open up this floor plan view and you scroll down to the bottom of the properties panel, you'll find phasing. Now you can see that there is a phase filter currently on it. And this says to show complete. So there are a few different options for this, but you can see that it's grayed out because we are using a view template. This is where you'd also control your phasing. If we scroll down to phase filter, you can see that it shows complete. So this will show the building as it would be once it's built pretty much. If you click on this, you can show that it either shows everything. So then the existing and the demolished stuff is shown as well, or you can just show the de demolition, the stuff that's been demolished, which is really helpful for builders. You can show the new and existing. So that's pretty much showing 
complete, I suppose. And then you can, you know, show only the current phase. So then you can show only the existing stuff or only the, the, the demolished stuff or only the new construction. So then how do you actually change the elements in the model to have these different filter phases things set to it? That's where you go into your phase. This floor plan, this is for the view. As you know that I have nothing selected. If you don't have something selected, your properties panel will show the properties for that current view that you have open. So the floor plan settings in the properties is set for the phase to be under new construction. So then anything that I build in this model now, in this view, sorry, it's going to be made as a new construction element. So if I were to now make a wall, you would see that it shows up as new construction. But let's say that I select this wall here, which is actually existing. You can see that the phase created was when it was existing. So if the phasing settings are set to existing, anything you build would be shown as, exi as existing. But you can change this after anyway. So you can change the phase created to new construction now. And now that would show up. I'm not actually going to do that because it's going to probably mess up my model. But um, that's how you would change it after the matter. If you want to demolish a part of it, then you can change. You can click on the element and change the phase demolished to new construction. Because if you're doing new works, it's going to be demolished in those new in that new works phase in the new construction phase. So you would just set the phase demolished to new construction. I'm not going to go too much deeper into that. I think that makes sense. If not, watch my Revit course. You'll learn more about all of these basic things. But it's a feature that is worth playing around with and getting familiar with because you're going to need it when you get into practice. Now I'm going to move on to the fourth feature that I think everyone should know, but I'm going to move over to my other Revit file. And this is the group project that we're currently working on for Studio 8. And I want to talk about groups because this model here is a multi-story tower. There are 17 floors or 19 floors or something. Pretty much you've got a bunch of typical floors. So you only design one floor and then the other you know, 18 floors are going to be exactly the same. So in that case, we don't want to have to model in every single floor if they're all exactly the same. So what I'm getting at here is how do you model something once and then put it throughout your model up different floors, different levels, so that every time you change that one element, it changes all of them. And that's using groups. As you can see, as I highlight and scroll through the building here, that there are these different blocks in the core that are showing up. So the core was designed on one floor. It was grouped. And then that group was copied to all of the other floors. So that now when we change the layout of the core for one floor, it's going to change it throughout the entire building. So that's a consistent way to work. So this here is a group. And if you want to group something, all you'd have to do is say, if I wanted to group this stuff here, this stair, I would go up to the modify tab, which is up here. And I can either press GP or I can click on this create group button here. So then you'll see that everything will be grouped together like this. So if you select it, you're selecting that entire group. You can double click on it to edit that group. And I'm not going to edit this because this is the central model for our design. So I don't want to have to mess around with it. And then everyone gets upset with me. But say I wanted to change the layout of these toilets because it probably doesn't need to be that big. Then I can make that change on one floor and it will change it throughout the entire building. Okay, so finally, this is the model that we used for the Revit beginners course, which I am now modeling up even more for the intermediate course which is going to be really good. Um, we look at a lot of different things for that. But what I want to show you is a really cool feature that you need to know. You really need to know this because it is overpowered as hell. It's called Enscape and it's a plugin. What it does is it renders your building in real time. And I'm just going to go over to the Enscape tab. You can actually get a free version of Enscape with a student license. So I think it's a 12 month license. You just have to uh, go to Enscape's page and you can download their student version. I'm going to start it up and you're going to see that it might take a while because it's, you know, it's trying to render out the building. But once it's rendered, you can then keep Enscape open and any design changes you do in the model, it's going to update this real time view or this real time render. And you can do some really nice renders with Enscape, but I like to use it as a design tool. So you can actually walk around your model inside of this plugin and you can look at it in a person's perspective. So it's like you're walking around the model and it's a virtual walkthrough. You can also do video and you can take renders from Enscape as well, which is really, really good. And I do recommend it. But as you can see, once we fly down here, 
we are now walking around our model. And you can see the pool's nicely rendered. It takes all of the Revit materials and it just makes them look nice pretty much. So if I walk through here, you can see we're walking into the games room. We've got the couch and the jukebox there. And we've got, you know, we can see the scale, the ceiling and how it looks. You've got the cornices on the walls. And you can kind of just walk through the building and get a feel for what it's actually like. And you can see some, you know, clipping things that are going on which aren't meant to be like that. And you can look at your model then and see what's actually overlapping. And you can kind of just have a play around your model and you know, fly around it and see what's going on. You can jump off the balcony if you want to. And it's just a really cool plugin which every beginner architect or student needs to know because it is very overpowered. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one.